Dear students, welcome you all to the one more session of uh, VTU eShikshana learning program on uh, module 1 uh, in uh, engineering chemistry, electrochemistry and uh, energy storage systems. So, this session is the continuation of the discussion we had in our uh, earlier class in which uh, I have told uh, what are batteries, the importance of uh, batteries in our uh, daily life, then uh, the properties a cell should possess in order to be categorized as a commercial cell, the components of a battery, the four important uh, components, anode, cathode, electrolyte and uh, separator and uh, uh, what are the properties material should possess in order to be considered as uh, effective uh, anode and uh, cathode and uh, what are the solutions that can be employed as uh, electrolyte in uh, batteries, then the role of membrane in uh, uh, batteries. Uh, now we know the different uh, types of batteries, the, I mean the classification of batteries, primary batteries, uh, secondary batteries and uh, reserve batteries. So, primary battery is the one which uh, cannot be recharged because the reactions that occur in a primary battery are uh, irreversible. They are of uh, no electrical usage after uh, complete discharge. They have to be discarded only. Whereas, uh, secondary batteries can be recharged, okay. Then uh, reserve batteries. In a reserve battery, one of the components is uh, isolated and uh, that missing, uh, that isolated uh, component is incorporated into the battery when we are in need of uh, electricity. We know the examples of uh, these batteries, primary battery, uh, zinc air battery, then uh, lithium MnO2 battery, dry cell are all uh, primary batteries, whereas uh, lithium ion batteries nickel cadmium battery, nickel metal hydride batteries are all uh, secondary batteries because the reactions that occur in uh, these batteries are uh, uh, reversible. So, the reactions can be uh, reversed by passing electricity in an opposite uh, direction to that of the discharging reactions and uh, the examples of uh, uh, reserve batteries are uh, magnesium batteries which are activated by the addition of water, magnesium silver chloride battery, magnesium cuprous chloride battery. And uh, we have discussed even on uh, the battery characteristics, some of the battery important battery characteristics such as uh, capacity, cell voltage, energy efficiency, shelf life. Shelf life. So, all these uh, uh, we have understood. So, with this uh, basic knowledge, uh, in today's session, we shall discuss on the working principle of uh, lithium ion batteries, how these uh, lithium ion batteries operate, what are the reactions involved and uh, how lithium batteries uh, can be uh, recharged by direct recycling method and uh, what advantages of uh, these batteries, what advantages of uh, lithium batteries make them suitable to be used as an energy storage system in uh, electric vehicles. Then uh, uh, um, I will be giving a brief introduction on uh, sodium ion batteries. Then uh, there are uh, two more batteries mentioned in our syllabus as uh, uh, self-study material. PB, PBO2 battery and uh, zinc air battery. So, we shall have a uh, brief discussion on uh, even these two batteries. So, lithium ion batteries, uh, as we all know, lithium ion battery is a secondary battery because uh, the reactions that occur in a lithium ion battery are uh, reversible. So, in today's class, we shall see how these batteries operate, what are the reactions involved and uh, how these reactions can be reversed 
I mean how these batteries can be, uh, how these lithium batteries can be recharged, what are the advantages, advantages of uh, these uh, lithium batteries and uh, what advantages make them superior or what advantages make them suitable to be used as an energy storage system in uh, electric vehicles. So, in the late uh, 1970s, a team of uh, scientists began developing uh, what would become the lithium ion battery, a type of uh, rechargeable battery that would uh, eventually power everything from portable electronics to electric vehicles and uh, mobile phones. A prototype lithium ion battery was uh, developed by Akira Yoshino in 1985 based on uh, the earlier research by John Goodenough, Stanley Whittingham, Ratchet Yazami and uh, Koichi Mizushima during the 1970s and uh, 80s. And then a commercial lithium ion battery was developed by Sony and uh, Asashi team led by Yoshio Nishi in uh, 1991. The Nobel Prize in uh, Chemistry 2019 was uh, awarded to three scientists, John Goodenough, Stanley Whittingham and Akira Yoshino for their contribution to lithium ion batteries. See, Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2019 was awarded to these three scientists, John B. Goodenough, Stanley Whittingham, Akira Yoshino for the development of lithium, bat lithium ion batteries for their contribution to the field of lithium ion batteries. See this is the schematic representation of uh, lithium ion batteries, okay. as usual it has uh, two electrodes anode and uh, cathode. Uh, look at this diagram, both the electrodes are in the form of layers, layers like this one above the other, both the anode and the cathode are in the form of layers. And the working principle of uh, this uh, lithium ion batteries is uh, different from that of uh, the uh, conventional batteries. So, um, true redox reactions are not involved in uh, lithium ion battery. Okay? So, truly this uh, redox reactions are uh, uh, not responsible for the generation of electricity in a lithium ion battery. So, this works on the principle of these lithium ion batteries work on the principle of intercalation, the mechanism involved is intercalation. What this intercalation is? Intercalation is the reversible movement, it is the reversible movement of an ion or a molecule between the different layers. So, I shall uh, explain uh, in detail how these batteries uh, operate and uh, what are the reactions involved. So, this is anode and uh, this is cathode, oh, there is uh, one uh, electrolyte. What type of uh, materials are used as anode? See, as I said, uh, this battery uses lithium intercalated metal oxide as cathode. Okay? It uses lithium intercalated metal oxide. A metal oxide intercalated with lithium is used as uh, cathode and uh, lithium intercalatable graphite as anode. The anode is graphite intercalated with lithium and the anode is a metal oxide intercalated with lithium. Anode and cathode are able to insert lithium ions into their layered structures. So, the electrodes are in the form of layers, so they can accommodate the lithium ions. Anode and cathode are able, they are capable of inserting lithium ions into their layered structures reversibly. The ions can move reversibly. Anode is lithium intercalated graphite layer having thin copper foil. This is anode. So, this acts as anode in a lithium ion battery, lithium intercalated graphite. Okay. Graphite intercalated with lithium is anode and the cathode 
as I said is a metal oxide ok. It may be lithium cobalt oxide, lithium nickel oxide, lithium manganese oxide intriculated with uh, intriculated with lithium. So, it is a lithium metal oxide, lithium metal oxide acts as cathode having aluminum foil as current collector. Then uh, what about the electrolyte? A lithium salt is used as the electrolyte. So, lithium salt uh, such as lithium hexafluorophosphate, this is lithium hexafluorophosphate, lithium tetrafluoroarsenate, lithium perchlorate, lithium tetrafluoroborate. See, these are the salts of lithium, lithium hexafluoropospate, lithium tetrafluoroarsenate, lithium perchlorate, lithium tetrafluoroborate dissolved in an organic solvent. So, the salt must be dissolved in an organic solvent, organic solvent such as ethylene carbonate, diethyl carbonate, dimethyl carbonate or dimethoxyethane. So, these salts cannot be taken in water. Why? Because lithium has a very good affinity towards water. It immediately combines, immediately reacts with water so that lithium hydroxide is formed. That should not form. So, only these lithium batteries must be completely free from water. Okay? They are, they should be non-aqueous. Therefore, the lithium salt should be dissolved in an organic solvent such as ethylene carbonate, dimethyl carbonate or dimethoxyethane. And a polymeric material polyethylene or polypropylene is employed as the separator. So, the anode is graphite intriculated with lithium having a thin uh, copper foil as the current collector and uh, the cathode, cathode is uh, lithium metal oxide such as lithium cobalt oxide, lithium nickel oxide, lithium manganese oxide having uh, aluminum foil as uh, the current collector. And the electrolyte is a, it should be a lithium salt such as lithium hexafluoroarsenate, lithium uh, hexafluoropaspate, lithium tetrafluoroborate, lithium perchlorate taken in, dissolved in an organic solvent uh, such as ethylene carbonate, dimethyl carbonate or dimethoxyethane. And uh, a polymeric material such as polyethylene or polypropylene is used as the separator. Now, we shall see. Uh, uh, the reactions involved in uh, lithium ion battery. So, as I said uh, in the beginning itself, the operation of this cell does not actually involve uh, true oxidation and reduction. The cell reaction involves the migration of lithium ions, lithium ions see here lithium ions migrate between the electrons like this, like this the lithium ions, lithium ions migrate. So, this migration is responsible for the generation of uh, electricity in a lithium ion battery. The cell reaction involves the movement of lithium ions between the positive and uh, the negative electrodes. Graphite being layered can be accommodated or intriculated. So, the uh, graphite one of the electrodes can accommodate the lithium ions. It being layered, it can intriculate the lithium ions. So, graphite being layered can be accommodated or intriculated with lithium between the layers to form, see this, like this. One lithium atom is present, one lithium atom is present for every 6 carbon atoms. That is what I have shown here, LiC6, one lithium atom is present for every 6 carbon atoms. During discharge what happens? Lithium atoms present in graphite layer are oxidized liberating electrons and lithium ions. See during oxidation the lithium ions, lithium atoms present in the graphite layer get oxidized into lithium ions and electrons are generated. These electrons flow through the external circuit to cathode. From anode to cathode, the electrons migrate to balance the charge and lithium ions move towards cathode through the organic solvent. Lithium ions migrate into the other electrode. At cathode, lithium ions are reduced to lithium atoms and are inserted into the layered structure of 
metal oxide. Since even cathode is in the form of uh, layers only, the cathode can accommodate the lithium ions. Lithium ions get reduced as uh, lithium atoms and they are inserted, they are accommodated in between the layered structure of the metal oxide. So, the what is uh, the uh, principle or the mechanism involved? It is nothing but intriculation. So, the operation of a lithium ion battery does not actually involve true oxidation and reduction. So, it involves the migration of uh, the lithium ions in between the electrodes. The cell reaction involves the movement of lithium ions between the positive and the negative electrodes. Graphite uh, can be accommodated with uh, the lithium ions between the uh, between its uh, different layers. One lithium atom is present for every six carbon atoms, Li C6 like this. And during discharge, lithium atoms present in graphite layer are oxidized, liberating electrons and the lithium ions. Electrons flow through the external circuit to cathode to balance the charge and lithium ions move towards the other electrode. I mean the cathode through the organic solvent. At cathode what happens is lithium ions are reduced to lithium atoms and are placed, they are inserted into the layered structure of metal oxide. Then uh, what are the reactions involved? See these are the reactions at uh, anode, see at anode lithium ions, lithium ions are formed and uh, electrons are uh, released electrons flow through the outside circuit and uh, these lithium ions see the lithium ions get reduced as lithium atoms okay and they are placed in between they are accommodated in between the different layers of cathode see lithium ions are released this is the anodic reaction so li plus x li plus plus x electrons so the cathodic reaction is Li 1 minus x CO O2, it is lithium cobalt oxide. Why I have written 1 minus x? 1 minus x plus x is 1 only, that is what I have shown here. It is lithium cobalt oxide. So, this is the net reaction, and this net reaction is uh, responsible for the generation of uh, electricity. So, what about the cell potential? Lithium ion battery gives a cell potential of around uh, 3.7 volt. So, these reactions continue till all the lithium ions are uh, completely exhausted. Then the battery will stop working. So, then how to recharge it? Current must be passed in the opposite direction. So, that again uh, lithium ions migrate into the anode and the battery again will uh, start working. So, these are the reactions involved. Then. Uh, what are the advantages of these lithium ion batteries as an electrochemical uh, energy system for electric vehicles? See, they have uh, very high energy density, self discharge is uh, very less, they have uh, very good shelf life, then uh, low maintenance, good uh, cell voltage, very high cell voltage and uh, good load characteristics, no requirement of uh, uh, this uh, priming then variety of types are available. So, these are the advantages of lithium ion batteries and uh, what are the applications? Uh, they are used in uh, electronic devices such as mobile phones, tablets, laptops and uh, in uh, digital cameras, used in uh, cardiac pacemakers. So, these lithium ion batteries are used in portable radios, pagers, CD players, then uh, these batteries are used in electric vehicles. These are the applications of uh, lithium ion batteries. Now, we shall see the advantages of these lithium ion batteries uh, in electric vehicles as an electrochemical energy systems. See the use of lithium ion batteries has grown significantly in recent years. They offer uh, some distinct uh, advantages and improvements over uh, the other forms of uh, batteries, battery technology. The lithium ion battery 
the advantages of lithium ion batteries include high energy density I have already mentioned. So, high energy density self discharge low maintenance cell voltage very high cell voltage it is around 3.7 volts um, 3 times higher than that of uh, potential provided by nickel cadmium or uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. Then uh, good load characteristics then uh, no requirement uh, for priming and different types of available different uh, varieties of uh, um, these batteries are uh, available these are the advantages which make them suitable uh, um, in electric vehicles as an energy storage system. So, we shall understand one by one in brief high energy density. Energy density what is energy density it is the measure of uh, how much energy a battery contains in proportion to its weight how much energy a battery possesses in proportion to its weight is called the uh, high uh, the energy density. This measurement is typically presented in watt hours per kilogram. So, it is expressed in watt hours per kg. A battery with high energy density has a longer battery run time in relation to the battery's size. Lithium ion battery has highest energy densities compared to any other uh, batteries. Okay. So, this is uh, the energy density of uh, uh, lithium ion batteries it is from 100 to 265 uh, watt hours per kilogram. The much higher energy density offered by lithium ion battery is one of the main advantages to make use them in high power applications such as electric vehicles as an energy storage device. This is one of the advantages. Then self discharge. The the main issue with uh, the use of uh, uh, rechargeable batteries is uh, the self discharge rate. Okay. We call it as uh, the uh, shelf life I have already told what shelf life is it is the period of storage under uh, specified conditions uh, during which a battery retains its performance uh, without undergoing self discharging reactions. Lithium ion cells are that their uh, rate of self discharge is much lower than that of uh, other rechargeable cells such as nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride forms. In our previous class I have told I have given the uh, discharge rates of uh, these two batteries. So, nickel cadmium battery around uh, 20 to 30 percent per month uh, whereas, nickel metal hydride battery around uh, 30 percent uh, um, per month you might be remembering. So, what about the self discharge of these lithium ion batteries it is typically around 5 percent in the first 4 hours after being charged, but then falls to a figure of around just 1 to 2 percent per month just 1 to 2 percent per month the self discharge rate of lithium ion battery is. Again this is also one of the reasons which makes it suitable to be used as an energy storage system in electric vehicles. Then low maintenance one more advantage one major lithium ion battery advantages is that they do not require maintenance whereas, lead acid cells you might be knowing these cells lead acid batteries require maintenance some needing the battery acid to be topped up periodically. Okay. Here in case of lithium ion batteries it is maintenance free then cell voltage this offers these batteries offer very high voltage. The voltage provided by a lithium ion battery is 3.7 volt it is around 3 times higher than that of the potential given by this nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride battery. This has many advantages being higher than that of the standard nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride and even standard alkaline cells at around 1.5 volt and lead acid battery provides a potential of uh, uh, what around 2 volt per cell. The voltage of each lithium ion cell is higher requiring less cell less cells less number of cells in many battery applications because because of its high cell voltage. Then is there any other advantage yes load characteristics. The load characteristics of a lithium ion cell is reasonably good they provide a reasonably constant 3.7 volt per cell 
before falling off as the last charge is used again one more advantage then no requirement for priming some batteries require priming they have to be charged slowly before they are used for the first time so some rechargeable cells need to be primed when they receive their first charge one advantage one of the advantages of these lithium ion batteries is that there is no requirement for this okay they are uh, supplied operational and uh, they can be used directly no need of charging slowly in the beginning then a variety of types of uh, these uh, lithium ion batteries are available there are several types of lithium ion cells this advantage of lithium ion batteries can mean that the right technology can be used for the particular application required lithium ion battery provides a high current density and uh, these batteries are ideal for power tools and electric vehicles different types of uh, lithium batteries lithium ion batteries are available lithium cobalt oxide battery lithium manganese oxide battery lithium iron phosphate battery lithium titanate battery lithium lithium cobalt battery i'm sorry lithium cobalt manganese oxide battery lithium nickel cobalt aluminum oxide so like this varieties of different types of lithium batteries are available so these are the advantages which make them suitable to be used as an energy storage system in electric vehicles now we shall see how these batteries are recycled how a lithium ion battery is recycled so lithium ion batteries are made of material such as cobalt graphite and lithium right so lithium ion battery consists of metal such as cobalt then lithium and it contains graphite which are considered as critical minerals and hence lithium ion batteries therefore the lithium ion batteries should be recycled at certified battery electronics recyclers rather than being discarded them in trash or put it in municipal recycling bins they are there are three basic methods to recycle these lithium ion batteries they are pyrometallurgy hydrometallurgy and direct recycling method okay pyrometallurgy hydrometallurgy and direct recycling method pyrometallurgy and hydrometallurgy are operated at industrial level whereas this direct recycling direct recycling can be carried out at lab and at pilot scale so now we shall see how lithium ion batteries are uh, uh, recharged so this is the schematic uh, representation of uh, um, what uh, recharge of uh, lithium ion batteries okay so uh, the after complete discharge it is the battery is uh, dismantled okay the battery is uh, the lithium ion battery is dis, uh, dismantled then it is given uh, uh, an alkaline wash it is washed with an alkaline um, to um, uh, spent sodium hydroxide solution to electrolyte recovery process then the anode is separated anode is separated after the alkaline wash then the cathode is uh, crushed cathode is crushed and it is washed with an alkali it is given uh, alkaline wash okay washed with sodium hydroxide to recover um, aluminum which is used as uh, one of the current collectors then it is subjected to milling and sieving finally thermal treatment it is heated to 650 degrees celsius to uh, what uh, recover the lithium ion battery so this is refreshed lithium ion battery so what are the advantages what are the advantages of uh, this direct recycling method see this uh, direct recycling method it actually starts with uh, i have already explained it starts with uh, dismantling or uh, shedding the cells this step enables immediate recovery of the, uh, 
the copper and uh, aluminum foils as metals while uh, retaining their virginal compound structure. Then aluminum and lithium could be recovered by leaching. After leaching with acid, the dissolved constituents can be separated from each other and reuse it to manufacture new cathode material. Uh, this is how the recycling of uh, lithium, uh, recycling of a lithium ion battery is carried out. And what about the advantages? What are the advantages of this direct recycling method? Direct recycling of lithium ion is a promising cost effective phenomenon. It is a cost effective process. Direct recycling is uh, low temperature, it is a low temperature, low energy process. So, this is carried out at uh, uh, low temperature and it requires uh, less energy and uh, this method uh, does not require uh, large scale and therefore, could be used locally or uh, for some home scrap avoiding the need to transport the material. So, these are the advantages of this uh, direct recycling. It is a promising cost effective process. So, direct recycling is a low temperature, low energy process. It uh, this, this method does not require large scale. So, these are the advantages of direct recycling method. So, now we have understood the working principle of uh, lithium ion battery, how lithium ion battery operates and uh, what are the uh, electrodes uh, used in a lithium ion battery, how it operates and what are the reactions involved, then uh, what are the advantages of lithium ion battery, okay? the advantages which make them superior or uh, the advantages which make them suitable to be used as an energy storage system in electric vehicles. And now we have also understood how a lithium ion battery is recycled, how it is recycled by direct recycling method. Next is the next concept is sodium ion battery. Sodium ion battery, sodium ion battery is an analogous to the lithium ion battery. Okay, it is an analogous to lithium ion battery, but uh, sodium is used as the charge carrier instead of uh, lithium. So, what are these uh, sodium ion uh, um, batteries? See, over the past few decades, lithium ion batteries uh, are dominating the global market because lithium is a lightweight and uh, high energy density element, almost uh, double that of sodium. Okay, then uh, high energy density, what is high energy density? High energy density means more energy storage within a relatively compact size and uh, longer run time. However, sodium has drawn the attention of uh, many scientists because of its uh, high availability, low cost, the environmentally benign extraction phenomenon, good stability, wider operating temperature range. And uh, non flammability. Lithium is a rare earth mineral with uh, high cost. Lithium is uh, expensive. Only a few countries control the supply chain. Okay. It is unstable at uh, high temperatures. So, sodium batteries uh, are uh, what relatively young compared to the other batteries. So, the development of sodium ion batteries took place side by side with that of uh, the lithium ion batteries in an early 1980s. In 2011, research interest in sodium ion batteries has been uh, revived. Sodium ion batteries are uh, energy conversion and uh, storage devices that use sodium ions to shuttle positive charge between the anode and uh, cathode in order to convert electrical energy to chemical energy. So, these are analogous, I have already told these sodium ion batteries are not analogous to the lithium ion battery, but they use sodium ion as the charge carriers. So, I will give a brief introduction on uh, these uh, sodium ion batteries. This is the representation of uh, uh, sodium ion battery as usual. There are two electrodes, cathode and uh, anode. So, 
So, the cathode is a layered uh, oxide, metal oxide, layered metal oxide such as uh, sodium cobalt oxide, sodium manganese oxide or uh, sodium uh, metal phosphate. So, uh, one of the uh, oxides, the metal oxides is used as uh, the cathode in, uh, uh, in a sodium ion battery and the anode, anode is uh, hard carbon, hard carbon that stores uh, sodium ions at uh, low potential. So, two electrodes anode, cathode and anode and even here the electrodes are uh, in the form of uh, layers only. So, there is one uh, separator and there is an electrolyte, anode is hard carbon which can store uh, sodium ions at, uh, uh, at a um, relatively low potential and uh, the cathode is a layered uh, metal oxide such as sodium manganese oxide, sodium metal uh, sodium cobalt oxide or uh, sodium uh, metal phosphate and uh, what about uh, the electrolyte? Electrolytes can be solids or liquids, okay. they can be solids or liquids. The solid electrolytes are either ceramics or uh, polymeric materials and uh, solvents primarily consist of mixtures of carbonates, carbonate solvents such as ethylene carbonate, diethyl carbonate, dimethyl carbonate and uh, ethers such as uh, dimethoxy ethane or even tetraethylene glycol. So, tetraethylene glycol dimethyl ether. So, such ethers can also be employed as uh, solvents. Then the most widely used non-aqueous electrolyte uh, in a sodium ion battery is sodium hexafluorophosphate, NaF6P, sodium hexafluorophosphate dissolved in a mixture of uh, these solvents. So, these solvents are mixed and uh, this electrolyte is dissolved in it, dissolved in them. Then uh, separator, uh, usually a polymeric material, polypropylene uh, microporous separators and the potential, potential is from 1.85 to 3.45 volt. Okay. What are the advantages of these uh, sodium ion batteries? Sodium ion batteries have uh, many advantages. They are low marketing prices, good efficiency, then uh, capable of working at uh, room temperature, at quite low temperature uh, these, these batteries, these sodium ion batteries uh, op operate, then uh, very safe to handle. And uh, these batteries offer superior environmental uh, credentials and uh, better raw material cost than uh, lithium ion batteries. As we all know, lithium is uh, costly, it is expensive. So, these are the advantages, low market price, good efficiency, uh, capable of working at uh, room temperature, safe to handle, then uh, they offer superior environmental credentials and uh, the raw material costs, better raw material costs than lithium ion batteries. And uh, is there any disadvantage? Yes, there are certain disadvantages like uh, low operating voltage, then low energy density and uh, large ionic size of sodium ions. It requires more power to keep energy flowing and it takes several days to charge in case uh, if it is not charged completely and uh, anode graphite absorbs uh, too little sodium. So, these are the disadvantages, lower operating voltage, lower energy density, large uh, ionic size of sodium ion requires more power to keep uh, energy flowing since uh, the ionic size of sodium ions is very large, it requires more power to keep the energy flowing and it takes uh, many days to uh, get charged to charge it um, in case if it is not charged completely then the anode graphite absorbs uh, too little sodium. So, these are the disadvantages of uh, uh, sodium ion batteries. Then uh, there are uh, two more batteries mentioned in our syllabus as uh, self study materials. So, I will give a brief introduction on uh, even these two batteries, zinc air battery and uh, uh, PB, PBO2 battery. So, PB, PBO2 battery is nothing but uh, the lead acid battery and uh, zinc air battery. Zinc air battery is a primary battery, it is a modern battery. 
So, this is uh, uh, the schematic representation of a zinc air, uh, zinc air button cell, zinc air button cell. Okay. It is a typical type of metal air batteries okay, which uses oxygen directly from the atmosphere to produce electrochemical energy. So, only the name air. So, air is also one of the reactants in these zinc air batteries. Therefore, the name zinc air battery. Oxygen diffuses into the cell and is used as the cathode reactant. So, air is one of the reactants. So, this is the representation of uh, zinc air uh, button cell, okay. zinc air uh, button cell. Here the anode is uh, zinc and the cathode is uh, porous carbon, anode is zinc, cathode is carbon, porous carbon. An alkali is used as the electrolyte, 30 percent KOH is uh, the electrolyte and uh, polyethylene, polyethylene uh, separator. So, separator is a polymeric material. Then see anode is composed of a rectangular zinc plate or granulated powder of zinc of very high purity mixed with an aqueous solution of 30 percent, 30 percent KOH aqueous solution of 30 percent KOH and a gelling agent to immobilize the composite and ensure adequate contact with zinc granules. So, the anode is zinc and what about the cathode? Cathode is a porous carbon plate. It is a porous carbon plate which acts uh, this, uh, this MnO2 with uh, MnO2 which acts as uh, catalyst for uh, better reduction of oxygen. So, uh, it is treated with uh, water repellents like uh, Teflon to prevent moisture along with air into the battery. And what about the electrolyte? Electrolyte as I have already uh, mentioned, it is an alkali, it is uh, potassium hydroxide, 30 percent KOH is uh, the electrolyte and a vent is provided, a vent is provided at uh, the cathode for the entry of oxygen into the cell. Okay. There will be an opening for the entry of oxygen into the cell at the cathodic side. The container is made of glass and how to represent the cell? This is how the uh, zinc air battery, this battery is represented zinc separated by slash 30 percent KOH slash carbon air. This is anode, zinc is anode and this is uh, the cathode in zinc air battery. Zinc 30 percent KOH carbon comma air. So, this is how uh, zinc air battery is uh, represented and uh, what about the reactions uh, that occur in a zinc air battery? See electrode reactions during discharge of uh, the zinc air battery are see at anode. This is the reaction that takes place at uh, the anode. Zinc undergoes oxidation, zinc is uh, the anode in zinc air battery. It uh, gets oxidized and releases uh, electrons along with the Zn2 plus ions. So, these Zn2 plus ions combine with OH minus to form zinc oxide. So, the net uh, anode reaction is Zn plus 2OH give ZnO plus H2O and electrons are released. So, this is the net anode reaction Zn plus 2OH give ZnO plus H2O plus 2 electrons. And what about the reaction that occurs that takes place at the cathode? So, as I have uh, mentioned in the beginning itself, oxygen is one of the reactants here, though it does not contribute to the overall uh, mass of the battery. Oxygen O2 plus H2O plus 2 electron, they form OH minus. So, the net uh, cell reaction is Zn plus O2 form ZnO. So, zinc combines with oxygen and the product is zinc oxide, a very simple reaction. During the cell reaction, the electrolyte remains invariant and the air cathode acts only as a reaction site and not consumed because 
oxygen will be entering, there will be a vent for the entry of oxygen. A very thin cathode about 0.5 mm of the cell permits the use of large zinc anode. This results in high energy density of the battery. So, this battery offers a potential of 1.45 volt, around 1.45 volt. What are the advantages? Very high capacity for its size, for its small size, the capacity is quite good. And these are light, therefore, high energy density and high power density, environmentally safe and wide range of operating temperature. See, look at the operating temperature, it is from minus 10 degree Celsius to 55 degree Celsius. So, these are the advantages. High capacity for its small size and light in weight, therefore, high energy density and high power density, then environmentally safe and uh, the operating temperature is quite good. So, wide operating, uh, uh, wide range of operating temperature from minus 10 to 55 degree Celsius. So, what are the disadvantages? Limited shelf life, okay, shelf life is uh, uh, limited and the cell is uh, hygroscopic, okay. It can be used only if the battery component is vented to the atmosphere. So, this is uh, one of the disadvantages of uh, zinc air battery. Then what are the applications? Uh, so, plenty of applications uh, this zinc air battery have got. They are used in hearing aids and uh, several medical devices such as nerve and uh, muscle stimulators, drug infusion pumps. Okay. Then uh, in railways and uh, military radio receivers, uh, these uh, zinc, uh, zinc air batteries uh, find applications. In pagers and uh, wireless headsets, these uh, zinc air batteries are uh, used. So, that was about uh, the zinc air battery. Now, one more battery is uh, PB, PBO2 battery, lead acid batteries. Okay. So, it is a type of rechargeable battery first invented in 1859. So, this was first uh, designed, it was first invented in 1859 by a French physicist, uh, Gaston Plant. So, it is the first type of rechargeable battery ever created, first uh, rechargeable battery is PBPBO2 battery. Okay. So, this is uh, the uh, uh, representation. So, I have shown uh, the PBPBO2 battery uh, in this uh, diagram. So, there are two electrodes, anode and uh, cathode and uh, both the electrodes are uh, made of lead only. Both are, please note, both the electrodes, anode as well as cathode. So, both are uh, lead grids only. Then how anode is different from cathode? The anode grid is filled with uh, spongy lead, anode is filled with uh, spongy lead, whereas the cathode, cathode grid is filled with uh, PBO2. This is cathode, even it is a grid of PB only, but it is filled with uh, PBO2. And the electrolyte is sulfuric acid, 20 percent sulfuric acid. Okay. So, only these are uh, 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 acid rechargeable batteries. Then uh, this gives a potential of, this arrangement gives a potential of around 2 volt, 2 volt per cell. Okay. Then uh, what are the reactions involved? These are the electrode reactions at the anode. Anode Pb undergoes oxidation, so that Pb2 plus ions are formed and electrons are released into the solution. They migrate into the cathode okay, and they get what consumed at the cathode. So, Pb gives Pb2 plus plus 2 electrons. Pb2 plus combines with SO4 2 minus to give PbSO4. So, this is the net electrode reaction at uh, the anode, Pb plus SO4 2 minus give PbSO4 plus 2 electrons. And what about the reaction that occurs at the cathode? PbO2, PbO2 because the cathode is uh, coated with PbO2, PbO2 plus 4H plus plus 2 electrons okay. and the products are Pb2 plus and uh, water. This Pb2 plus combines with SO4 2 minus to form 
to give PbSO4. Then uh, what is the net uh, cathodic reaction? It is PbO2 plus uh, 4 H plus plus SO4 2 minus plus 2 electron and the products are PbSO4 plus 2 H2O. So, this is the net reaction. The net reaction is Pb plus PbO2, Pb plus PbO2 plus 2 H2SO4 to give 2 PbSO4 plus 2 H2O, Pb plus PbO2 plus 2 H2SO4. The products are 2 PbSO4 and 2 H2O. So, uh, this is how the lead acid battery operates and these reactions are uh, reversible. The reactions can be reversed. All these reactions can be reversed. Okay. So, when the density of sulfuric acid falls below 1.5 gram per cm cube, sulfuric acid is the electrolyte, when its density falls below 1.2 gram per cm cube, current is passed. Current is passed in a direction opposite to that of the discharging reaction. These are all the discharging reactions. So, current is current should be passed in its opposite direction. When current is passed, then sulfuric acid, see, look at this reaction. Sulfuric acid is reformed, sulfuric acid is regenerated. When its density, when the density of sulfuric acid enhances, again the battery will start working nicely. So, this is how. Uh, lead acid battery operates and uh, uh, see these are the reactions involved in a lead acid battery. Now, we shall see what are the applications, the applications and uh, the limitations of uh, uh, lead acid uh, battery. These batteries are extensively used in automobiles to start the engine. See each cell gives a potential of uh, around uh, 2 volt, but that is not sufficient for uh, the ignition purpose. Therefore, uh, 6 such cells are arranged in series, so that uh, the output will be around uh, 12 volts, which is very much sufficient for uh, the lighting or uh, ignition purposes in uh, cars. So, extensively used in automobiles to start the engine. They are also used for electric supply in telephone exchangers, railway trains, hospitals and in laboratories. Then uh, what are the limitations? The potential decreases with decrease in the concentration of H2SO4 that I have already told. So, it decreases with the decrease in the concentration of H2SO4. Excessive discharge and quick charging shortens the life of the battery. So, this we should remember. Okay? Excessive discharge and quick charging, even this quick charging, quick charging decreases the life of the battery. Cell potential and the effectiveness is reduced at low temperature and excessive charging may damage the electrodes and may also lead to explosion. So, these are the limitations of uh, uh, a lead acid battery. So, in uh, today's class, we have understood uh, the working principle of uh, lithium ion batteries or in this chapter starting from the definition of uh, battery, what are batteries and uh, what are the applications of batteries, then uh, what is a commercial cell, what are the properties a cell should possess in order to be categorized, in order to be considered as a uh, commercial cell, then uh, what are the important uh, components of a battery and what are the uh, battery characteristics certain important uh, battery characteristics uh, uh, we have uh, understood, battery characteristics such as uh, cell potential, then uh, capacity, shelf life, energy efficiency, all these uh, um, we have uh, understood. Then uh, lithium ion batteries, the working principle of uh, lithium ion battery, how lithium ion batteries uh, operate, what is the mechanism involved, the mechanism of uh, uh, intercalation, the reversible movement of ions between the layers of uh, the anode and uh, the cathode. Uh, the reactions, we have seen the reactions involved in uh, lithium ion battery, then the advantages and the limitations of lithium ion batteries and uh, the recycling of uh, lithium ion batteries, how 
lithium ion batteries are recycled by direct um, recycling method. Then I have given a brief introduction on uh, sodium ion batteries, the electrodes involved in uh, the electrodes that are employed in uh, sodium ion batteries, anode, cathode, what type of uh, materials are used as anode and uh, cathode in sodium ion batteries, the electrolyte and uh, the separator that are used in uh, um, sodium ion batteries, advantages of uh, sodium ion batteries and the limitations uh, we have seen. Then uh, we have discussed, we had a brief discussion on uh, uh, two batteries, two commercially important batteries, uh, PBPBO2 battery and uh, uh, zinc air battery. Thank you.